this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Oh, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine, oh, everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it in my neighborhood, oh. I'm gonna let it shine all in my neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine in my neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it in my neighbor's home. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine in my neighbor's home. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, oh. I'm gonna let it shine, oh. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Shine, shine, shine. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Lord, shine, shine, shine. I'm gonna let it shine, 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 shine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Father, that we once again come to his humble as we know how. Thank you for everything that has been said and done right now, Father, thus far, right now, Father, touching this neighborhood right now, Father, that you would touch the mind, body, soul, and spirit for other, of the people of this complex right now, Father. Not only this complex, Father, but every other around the world right now, Father, that you have touched the nations right now, Father, especially in Ukraine right now, Father, and many different war-torn neighbor, neighborhoods right now, Father. Father against son, daughter against mother, family against family, church against church. There are all these many things that are divided against itself right now, Father. But we pray for a revival right now, Father. We pray that the children of God come together to help those that are in need right now, Father. Continue to bless, Father, this church right now, Father. Learn the Bible with me, Father. I'm using it for your glory, for your honor. Bless this church right now, Father, with many people, many disciples, not just people, not just people coming, but disciples of Christ that have a changed mindset and a changed heart. Remove all the giants that are in our lives right now, Father. Some may stand strong right now, Father, but we're able to go on in spite of. We can't be stopped. We can't be moved. So we thank you right now, Father, for your peace, your love, your joy, meekness, temperance, and faith. Only found in Jesus Christ right now, Father. Touch right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Heal broken bones right now, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, Father. 
heal infirmities in the name of Jesus. Heal mental health right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Touch families right now, Father, that are warring against each other. There are too many families that are not together, including my own. I want us all to be together, but we know, Father, we have lives. We have different things that we have to do. We may not be together physically. See, people didn't think I was gonna go here, but we are together spiritually, in prayer and in supplication. Too many of us jump to conclusions before we even finish. We assume the worst of others. I just pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Remove evil, remove darkness, remove depression and anxiety. And all manner of evil, Father. We know evil is gonna be right behind us, it's gonna come whenever we try to do good. But in spite of, we thank you I remove any demons that are in this complex right now, Father. I bind them in the name of Jesus. I bind them in the name of Jesus. Father, take me out of self and into your spirit right now, Father. In the name of Jesus. 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 We must cleanse ourselves of all unrighteousness. We must cleanse ourselves of all unrighteousness. In the tongue, in the heart, in the mind, body, soul, and spirit. Help us, Father, in Jesus' name. Okay, brothers and sisters, let's go ahead and get started with today's word. And if you have your Bibles with you, we are coming out of the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, starting at the first verse. And the co-topic for this is the plan to kill Jesus. So, a bit of a backstory about that, that the Pharisees and Sadducees, they never did like Jesus in anything that he did. Although Jesus never did anything to anybody, he didn't hurt anybody, he didn't say anything to anybody, that was not true. And here's the thing about that, the truth hurts, the truth hurts. So the Pharisees and Sadducees, here's the thing about them, they believed in God, but did not believe in Jesus which is the unpardonable sin, is denying the power of God and the Holy Spirit. This cannot be forgiven. Now, the Pharisees and Sadducees were pretty religious individuals. They believed they did everything right. They believed they did everything righteous in the sight of God. But let me explain this to you, brothers and sisters. Abraham was the first person to be counted as righteous. Now, how did he do this? He just lived his life pleasing to God. He wasn't perfect. He even laughed at God's plan because he didn't believe that he could have a child at that old age. But in spite of all that, God still counted him as righteous because he believed God. 
So what do you believe today? Are you believing the news? Are you believing your own thoughts? Are you believing what the world says? Or are you believing the word of God? We must contend with demonic influence. We must contend with our own flesh. We must contend with situations that bog us down. We must contend with all these things, but out of all of it, who do we believe? So let's get into the account of Matthew. So each one of the disciples, a few of the disciples, uh, wrote a book of the Bible from their account of Jesus Christ. So let's just say this, some things are similar, some things are not. But the account just goes to show you how somehow we get different interpretations of the same thing. Everybody has their own view or point of things. So once again, this is the viewpoint of Matthew. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Let's stop there. So Jesus is prophesying to his disciples that he will be captured. Now he hasn't gotten into who he's going to be captured by, but he's letting them know that he will be captured in a few days after the Passover, after their final Passover with Jesus. This is where we get the Lord's Supper today. This is why we take the Lord's Supper. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. So the chief priest, who was the head of the scribes and Pharisees, gathered everybody together and said, we must get rid of this Jesus. He is causing a ruckus in the streets. He is causing a ruckus. We cannot have him causing a ruckus. So let me tell you this. Jesus was the first person to be a trendsetter. You know why? We still talk about him today, 2,000 years later. Here's the thing. He never broke any rules, but yet people consider him a criminal. He did everything that God told him to do, yet people hated him for it. So, now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head. And he sat at meat, at meat. When his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? So, this woman had an alabaster box that was worth a lot of money. Brothers and sisters, what do you value most? What do you value most in life? Is it your car? Is it your fame and fortune? Is it your money? Is it yourself? All these things can have an impact in your life in one of two ways. Negatively or positively. So here's the thing. What do you consider more? The things of this world or God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? What do you need more? 
Well, obviously the answer should be Jesus, but this is not the answer to everybody. This is not everybody's answer. There will be some people that will tell you, well, I, I value this and that more. Because they're just like, well, Jesus is not here with me. I can't see him. I can't see him. I can't feel him. I need something tangible. I got to tell you, spirits can be very tangible. See, here's the thing. When Jesus had his body on this earth, Let me back up a little bit. When Jesus was born from Mary, guess who the father was? And no, it's not Joseph. The father is God. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she conceived Jesus Christ. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, for a man and woman, for a woman to conceive a child, don't they have to, you know what? Not in this case. She supernaturally conceived Jesus Christ. It was not by natural means. When Jesus was born, he lived a sinless life growing up. He lived a normal life. So this is my thing, children. If Jesus lived a normal life growing up, what do you expect for yourself? Don't be in such a hurry to grow up. <laughs> because even Jesus said, I have to wait for my time to come. Jesus didn't start his ministry for a long time. So, the thing is, there's a time and season for everything. But basically, what I'm getting at, what do you value more? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye we the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever the go this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman had done, be told for a, more, for a memorial of her. So basically, this woman did not know what she was doing. She did a good work for Jesus Christ. She poured the alabaster over his head, which is where we get the sweet smelling aroma when we pray to God. When we pray to God, God get this sweet smelling aroma in his nostrils from his people, from his children. Now basically, the disciples obviously said, you know, why are you wasting this? You could have just sold this. And Jesus had to explain to them, no, she did a good thing. For I will not be with you always. See, here's the thing. These disciples, the 12 disciples were with Jesus. Yet they still did not understand what he was saying to them. This is where a lot of the confusion comes in now. Even to other Christians, even to Christians. This, I mean, because look at this, the disciples. They closely walked with Jesus, but yet they still did not understand. This is why we must teach the gospel. This is why we must teach about Jesus for understanding. So if you get understanding, you understand why it's important for you to get baptized and for you to become 
a follower of Christ. Not just becoming a Christian, but a follower and disciple of Christ. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went into the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. Okay, people in the church, even people in the church will <laughs> convene together against somebody. Judas Iscariot was one of the disciples, but what can he get out of it? This is what many people will say. I'm a Christian. What do I get for being a Christian? Do I get money? Do I get status? Do I get fame? Do I get any of these things? Why should I do it? Well, you gain so much more. You gain eternal life. You get to walk the streets of filled with gold. You get to live in a mansion beyond your comprehension. Hey, see, here's the thing about it. If you are a son of God, daughter of God, your mansion is being built right now. Your mansion is being built. Your, the city is being built right now. And one day God shall reveal it. But for now, we have to live here. For now. It won't be long. That's why we must tell as many people as possible, as much as possible as we can, while we have time. And from that time sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at thy house with, thy, with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. And when even the, was come, when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So, which one is it? Which one of you are going to betray him? I came to Christ. I did as he said. And this happened. And that happened. So now I'm going to get my payback. You didn't do what I said that I needed you to do for me. I didn't get the girl. I didn't get the job. I didn't get the husband. I didn't get what I wanted. Let me tell you this. Your arms are too short to box with God. I, let me tell you this. There are going to be people that are going to betray you in life. And again, you don't have to do anything to anybody. You don't have to say anything to anybody. You don't have to do anything to anybody to harm anybody. There are just going to be people that just don't like you. And guess what? Good riddance. So long. Sayonara. Hasta luego. Bye. Pretty much those people don't like you for who you are you don't need them and if you change for the better and they don't like the change in you you don't need them see there's the thing about it Jesus still loved Judas regardless so in other words love your enemies regardless I'm not telling you to bow down to them I'm not telling you to do this and that no let them go. Don't. <laughs> just let them go. Move on with your life. Life is too important. Judas had his reasons. It was a bad reason, but he had a reason. 
He did it for money, which is what a lot of us would do. Be honest. If you have an opportunity to get a lot of money, and a lot of people would straight up say, I sold my soul to the devil for this contract. They would straight up tell you. A lot of people are secret about it. Some people aren't. But irregardless, no reason is a good reason to betray Jesus. None. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Is it me? Am I going to betray you, Jesus? Did, did, I, I, I couldn't have. I, I mean, I, I did what you told me. I, I, can't, I couldn't have betrayed you. You got to ask yourself this question every single day. Are my actions lining up with the word of God? I'm not saying you're being perfect. Nobody is. But are my actions and lifestyle matching up with what God is telling me to do? Am I feeding the poor? Am I teaching the gospel? Am I preaching the gospel? Am I just helping those in need? Everybody has a gift and talent. But what are you using it for? Is it just to get self-recognition? Or is it to further the kingdom of God? This is your choice and decision that you have to make. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as is the written of him. But woe unto him that man who the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. This is Jesus' words. If you betray the Son of God, it would have been better if you were never born. These aren't my words. I guarantee one thing. You betray God, nothing might happen. And there's a reason why I say that. It's because his justice is not swift. Not like it used to be. Now, in the old days, the Old Testament, you betrayed God, you were dead on the spot. You lied, you dead on the spot. But now we're living in the time of grace, which is justice is not swift, which is kind of what's happening to me right now but it's grace it's grace there's going to come a time when that grace is going to run out that grace is going to run out one day but for now he's giving us time he's giving us time let us repent Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto thee, Thou hast said. And as thou were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciple, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, for I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When we get to heaven, there's going to be another feast. There's going to be another Passover. It's going to be a celebration and a party. All the sorrow, all the pain that we went through here is not going to be for nothing. It's not for nothing. I can guarantee you that. If, if it were not so, God would not have said it. Jesus would not have said so. Brothers and sisters, the moral is, don't... 
The moral is, don't betray Jesus. Basically, keep with him. Keep with Jesus. Don't betray him. No matter what the situation is, no matter what's going on, stay with him. You won't regret your decision. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, come touch this place right now, Father. Touch us right now, Father. We need you and cannot do without you. So we thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy, and your peace that you have shown us, Father, in spite of who we are. We're not perfect, but we can be used by you, Father, if we choose so. It's a choice that we have to make. And I believe that everybody has an opportunity for grace. Everybody has a chance to get to know Jesus Christ. This is your opportunity right now to give him a chance. Accept him today, and I guarantee he will change your life forever. In Jesus' name. Thank you once again, brother and sisters, for joining me on this Learn the Bible with me. And I pray that you got a greater understanding of what the Bible is trying to tell us on today.